You say you like spaghetti westerns. You say you like the Italian variety of spaghetti westerns. Well, let me tell you, boy, howdy, I've got a disc for you. Actually, Arrow has a disc for you. Arrow's probably had this disc for you for a while, depending on when you got it. I'm a little late to the party on this one. This is Django from 1966, a Sergio Corbucci Western, spaghetti Western, if you will, starring Franco Nero as this man with no name, funny enough. <laughs> Franco Nero as this sort of cowboy Western type guy, scruffy dude, carrying a coffin, dragging a coffin behind him into this town that's sort of ravaged and torn between two factions. Yes, it sounds quite a bit like the Sergio Leone Westerns, but bear with me here. He walks into this town and shuffles into this town, and he is caught between these two warring factions. It's a team of like these Southern racists and a team of these like Mexican revolutionary bandito guys, and uh, playing both ends against the middle. Very much sort of a standard spaghetti Western plot. Uh, Nero is sort of, you know, whose side is he going to take? And is he going to help the good guys fight the bad guys? And who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? And um, what's in that coffin? And this is the plot that jettisoned Franco Nero to international superstardom, and, uh, or at least international spaghetti Western superstardom and uh, really kicked off an insanely long series of films that uh, this Django was really, really popular. And it, the extras on this disc get into this. There was this whole rash of Django sequels that really weren't even made by the same people uh, that didn't even necessarily have a character named Django in them, but it, it, it weren't always spaghetti westerns. I think some other countries made some too. And it was just this rash of Django movies because it was so popular. And uh, this is the movie that kicked it off, and it's really good. As I mentioned, Sergio Corbucci, who is referenced in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as the director that uh, DiCaprio's character goes off to Italy to make westerns with, or had made a couple spaghetti westerns with. And uh, it's very stylish, it's very gritty. Django suffers a lot of abuse by the end of this movie. <laughs> like, he's like one of the walking dead by the end of this movie. He is so crushed and crippled and abused, but still manages to get his revenge. Not that I'm giving anything away. And uh, when you find out what's in the coffin, if there's a way you can see this movie, if you're interested in this sort of thing, and not know what's in the coffin beforehand, it is a wonderful, amazing stand-up and cheer moment when he pops the top on that and just and utilizes what's inside. Uh, <clears throat> very brutal at times, as I mentioned, great score, as a lot of these spaghetti westerns did have, and Franco Nero is just amazing. This is one of his earliest roles and uh, really jettisoned him to stardom. This Blue Underground, sorry, Blue Underground, was originally a Blue Underground release in this country on DVD and Blu-ray. This Arrow release uh, looks phenomenal, as they always do, and a ton of extras, some of which are ported over from the Blue Underground previous releases from the last decade or two, and some new ones, I believe. Um, you have your choice of the original Italian language track or the English dub. Um, I often lean toward English dub for certain genres because that's how I always saw them as a kid. We chose to watch this in Italian, and uh, I popped over the English dub to see what it was like, and I'm glad I listened to it in Italian because... I don't know if you get Franco Nero's voice, I'm not 100% sure on that, but the English dub really sounds like somebody doing a Clint Eastwood impersonation and it's really distracting and it's, it takes me out of it. It's, it's just like, it's, it, Franco Nero's Franco Nero and he's great and he's cool in his own merits. There's no reason to make him sound like Clint Eastwood except when this movie was released here, the dollar, the fistful of dollars, the dollars films had just come out or were about to come out and, and uh, they'd already been a success in Europe and they were trying to ape that style. He looks kind of a lot like Clint Eastwood at that time, and uh, to dub him sounding like that, it's just, it's just kind of cheesy to me. So I went with the Italian track, but you know, whatever floats your boat. And again, Voluminous Extras looks great, as with most all Arrow releases, really. Easily can replace any previous version you've had on your shelf. Gives you all the goodies you had before, plus more. It's very extensive and it's excellent. This is paired in this set with a movie called Texas Adios, which also had been released by Blue Underground previously on video, also stars Franco Nero. Here he plays a Texas, I believe, lawman who crosses the border into Mexico with his younger brother to seek revenge on the man who murdered their mother, maybe father and mother, it's been a little while since I watched it, but parental revenge, basically. 
And uh, there's a lovely twist partway through the film that is just like, oh, okay, cool. Now how do you deal with things? Uh, again, very stylish, very badass. Uh, some great scenes of uh, pistolery and uh, frontier brutality. Uh, really, really like Texas Adios. And again, beautiful transfer on this from Arrow. You get a ton of extras. You get an interview with the guy who played the younger brother, which is cool. And the Arrow interviews are great because they're not just tell us about your experiences making this movie there. Tell us about your life. How did you get involved in cinema? Why don't you tell us about this movie too? So it's, they're, they tend to be nice 15 to 20 minute or longer career spanning interviews, which I really appreciate because I don't know a lot about a lot of these people. And it's kind of cool that in one little sitting, if you're interested, you can get somebody's sort of life or career story at once and it makes you more informed. These are like, again, I always say Arrow is my criterion. I, I love the movies they release for the most part. And I also love learning more about the genre of the movies that they are releasing and about the people who are involved with these movies. So out now, oh, little side note, we'll walk it back a little bit. This originally had been slated to be released like a year ago and the, everything was ready to go out the door and copies shipped to retailers and some got shipped to people who'd pre-ordered them. And then there was a little bit of an issue where the release had to get halted for a while. So some people got this disc more than a year ago. Uh, my review copy, I think I got at the end of 2019, maybe? It was, it was a while ago. And uh, they're out now, they're available now. It was a limited ed edition, so you may need to kind of poke around to find this, but it is absolutely worth owning. It is, uh, Django is such a classic. You know, Tarantino made the Django film, took the title as an ode to these movies. Um, they are classic and sort of a legend Django of the um, spaghetti Western world. And Texas Adios doesn't get talked about that much, but it's really good. So I would highly recommend this Arrow release of Django and Texas Adios, both from 1966.